All right, you two, what is going on? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. What I'm doing today is showing you guys how to ship a comic book in the mail. Now, there's a million other ways than what I'm going to show you, as most of you probably know. But many of those ways, most likely, greater than none, have a large window of opportunity of that book becoming damaged in the shipping process. Now, keep in mind, when we are shipping comic books, the tiniest little stress on that book can lower a grade. So if you have a comic book in just a bubble wrap and it's getting thrown around in the mail and uh, you get a hard hit on, on the edge of a comic, it can ding it. Something you package the comic in something that's not sturdy that can bend just a, a slight the slightest bit can uh, put a, a spine tick in, into the spine of the book certain things like that. So what I'm going to show you guys today is how to package a book in a Gemini mailer. Now there are many other mailers and I showed in a video not too long ago certain mailers that look like this where it is a uh, thin. Uh, anywhere from, you know, like three quarters to a, to an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. It is cardboard and um, uh, all around, that is. There's no uh, bubble. There's no padding. There's no sockets. It's, it's all sturdy cardboard. Um, and you can also, for packages like that that aren't Geminis, you can add your own uh, extra cardboard to the book. So let me show you guys what I do first starting out with the book. So this was a one book order, okay? We got an amazing Spider-Man here. Um, this is a really, really nice book. It is definitely a very fine book if you don't count this cutoff. Um, I sold it for like six bucks. Um, so yeah, somebody somebody cut that out. Uh, but other than that, it's a beautiful book. Um, now, what I'm going to do with this book is I already put it in a uh, poly bag and I have it double boarded. I have two boards in here for extra protection. Oh, I got a little, I just threw that in there. Um, so just pretend that's not there because uh, it's not going to do anything to change how I package this. Now, what I have under this book is two regular backing boards, okay? No matter what I do. Now, say this was multiple books, I'd be doing the same thing up to three books, okay? If it's up to four, then th then it changes. So this is going to be from one, two, to usually to three books, okay? I take a backing board and I sit one behind the book or if it was two or three books, behind the books, just like that. I'm going to throw this little flyer in there just to give them some little cool little flyer that could be used as a bookmark. I'm going to take a separate backing board and I'm going to put it on top. Now, as you can see, I already put some painter's tape here. So what I have here is a backing board behind and on top. And then I don't use... Now, there is tape on the back of the poly bag. Usually, I already had it here. And I'm not going to like rip the bag and take the, the regular scotch tape off. But usually, when I pack uh, package a book, I put it in a fresh poly bag. And I put fresh tape on it, and that fresh tape would be painter's tape on the back of this. I don't like to put any scotch tape or packaging tape anywhere near the book, like a lot of people do when they when they ship books. So I'm going to use painter's tape around the backing boards that I'm using for extra protection. So I already have one here. I'm going to put one here, here, and here. All right, now we have painter's tape on each side. The book is nice and, uh, you know, secured in there. Now, let me explain why I use painter tape on uh, on the backing boards because a lot of other people do this, but look at this. You can see that the, the poly bag is kind of coming out right there. If this was scotch tape or packaging tape, it would be really hard to get this off without one ripping the poly bag. I've done that. People people that I buy books from do that. I try to get it off as gently as I can. It rips the poly bag. And when you rip the poly bag, you have a possibility of damaging that book. So painter's tape. This will come off of that easily without even hurting the poly bag at all. Now, if this was a... If, if this was like multiple books and if it wasn't a Gemini mailer... Well, no matter what, if it wasn't a Gemini mailer... Because Gemini mailers have this extra cardboard inside... I would be doing this 
and putting an extra cardboard cutout and uh, on both sides and packaging, uh, painters taping it is, as well. For example, something like this. If this was not a Gemini mailer and was just a regular cardboard mailer, I would be putting it after I put it in the extra vacuum boards, I'd be putting it in a sandwich between two cardboard cutouts and I would repeat the same process, painter's tape, painter's tape, painter's tape, painter's tape, boom. But since it's a Gemini and it already has extra cardboard in there, I'm just gonna leave it in the backing board. So uh, what we do, many of you I'm sure have seen Gemini mailers and have seen the uh, extra cardboard they have uh, inside. So I'm gonna stick this right in here, okay? Now, before I close this though, Again, I'm going to use not packaging tape like many do. I'm going to use painter's tape to secure this book to the Gemini mailer. So in the process of, uh, you know, in the shipment process, it's not moving around. All right, now here we go. So I got painter's tape on all sides that is attached to the cardboard of the Gemini mailer. This book is extremely secure. Now, if this was uh, uh, a book that I had in the two cardboard things, um, inside the uh, mailer that does not have the extra insert like this, I would still use painter's tape on those cardboards attached to the package, of course. So we're gonna close this up and now this part that, that closes over, I am going to secure this with packaging tape because now we're really far away from the book for packaging tape to really do any damage. So this is where I do start adding packaging tape. I'm going to put some packaging tape uh, right here uh, on the front and that basically secures my book. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's there. We got the packaging tape right there and then once I put the packaging tape on, I put an extra... A uh, painter piece of painter's tape here, an extra piece of painter painter's tape here to uh, secure it even more. So there it is, secured inside there. And of course, the last step is closing the outside of the Gemini mailer. So once you get the the overlap closed, you want to get some packaging tape on this. And then what I also do is I make sure the packaging tape wraps around to the front so it's extra secure on both ends. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so now we have a uh, packaging tape along the back. It is closed and I made sure it was long enough to where it wraps over the front. That's what I was talking about there, right there and right there. So now I'm, I could shake this all around that book is not moving at all it is not opening these mailers uh are first you know you got the book inside of here and i love how gemini mailers have the extra uh about an inch and a half of cardboard so on both ends so if it gets hit it's not even touching the book at all and i'm telling you this book is so secured in there it's not it's not moving so the next step would be of course to put your label on I'm not going to uh, show the label because it has uh, people's personal uh, address on it. This label is first class. I ship my stuff first class if it's under uh, 13 ounces. And a standard Gemini mailer is, you know, with up to three. If you don't put any more extra cardboard in, uh, it, it's most likely going to be under uh, 13 ounces. It's going to be about 12 ounces. Uh, anywhere from like a 10 to 12 point something from one to three books. That's... That's been my, um, uh, what I've been dealing with when I've been sending them. So, and I just made the video about why we should stop complaining about higher shipping costs on, on eBay. And I'm just going to repeat myself this package. Now with this packaging shit, uh, slip, I print this slip from the eBay order and eBay does give you like, I don't know, like a, I don't know if it's a 10% discount off of shipping because then you get hit with the fees, but with their discount, this packaging shit, I keep saying shit. This packaging slip cost me about, off the top of my head, what was it? Four, four, nine, $4.19, okay? 
and I charge six seventy five from for one to two books. I I charge six ninety five. I add twenty cents on for a third one just because it's extra um, supplies for me. But I, I charge basically uh, six seventy five to six ninety five for a shipping slit that costs me basically four dollars and nineteen cents. So I'm just taking in uh, a little more than two dollars off of that, but that's to cover the cost of packaging. Tape tape is not cheap. You buy the these things right here cost like four bucks from the post office, and I mean they don't last that long. Uh, you got to buy your mailers uh, if you're using bubble wrap. You got to buy your bubble wrap. I print from my own computer. That that's ink. Ink is not cheap. So and, and I. Again, you're getting this book shipped in such a secure manner that this book is going to come to you in exactly the grade and the shape and the condition that it was when it left my house, uh, when it when it departed from my possession. And that is the goal. And again, that two dollars and um, you know six uh, sixty five cents or whatever or or fifty five cents is. Going to my supplies, I'm I'm eating those costs. I'm not I'm not pocketing that at all. So that's why there's a little bump up in the shipping, um, be, be, because it covers my costs and the eBay fees and the PayPal fees. So I could I could package this book the same exact way, and I could pay like two dollars and eighty cents for uh, media mail, maybe upcharge to you know uh, four dollars. Uh, for the buyer, and it saves them a couple dollars, but then you're waiting 7, 10, 12 days for your books, and who knows what can happen with media mail, I mean, you know, because technically you're not supposed to be shipping comic books via media mail, so, uh, I mean, hey, it's a couple bucks, right, a couple more dollars if you want the book, the, oh, 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 don't look at that, <laughs> anyways, I'm going to tape this on, guys, and I'm going to send this off to the post office, that's my spiel, guys, and I know I, I, I kind of went into detail, it was kind of long, but, but hey, you know, I just, for those of you selling out there, you know, me as a buyer, I get so many books that are damaged because they're packaged crappily, if that's even a word, crappily, but crappily, you know, it's like, I am willing to pay a couple extra dollars to make sure that the book I bought is packaged as safely as this is, so... That's my spiel. Leave some comment, comments, guys. I would love some uh, some feedback, what your guys' experiences is, what you guys do as a seller. Uh, and uh, please subscribe if you have not done yet so. Until next time.